All right, welcome back to season two of the show. We got two great ones for you today. We got pork tenderloin and center cut pork chops and thick pork chops. So we're gonna show you how to get these seasoned up and onto the cooker. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Okay, so today we're uh, smoking up some pork loins. It's pork tenderloins. They're actually not the loin, they're actually the tenderloin. And this is what be considered the filet mignon of pork. So this piece would be this piece of the T-bone chop. And this piece right here is the rib piece right here. So if you had loin ribs and you left the bone in, it would just be bone and loin ribs and they would cut right here. So that's what we're looking at today. This part is always the nice tenderest part of the piece of meat right there. And that's what this is. So we're gonna start cleaning this up. We got some silver skin right here. So we're gonna go in and just start removing some of the silver skin. Same way you would do on a piece of beef. There's no difference. And just get it out of there because it's gonna make a tough bite and you won't enjoy that in a nice tender piece of meat like that. As you can see that this piece right here has no silver skin on it at all. This is a dynamite piece of meat right here. And I actually am cooking this separate today because I always hate when I'm eating a pork chop and I finish that nice tenderloin piece in there. So we're cooking some more up today. All right, so just get that out of there like that and just take your time with it. This is a very easy piece of meat to trim. doesn't get any easier than this. That nice big piece right there. Just lift the meat and cut straight through. And this fat right here, we're gonna leave it on. This is a very lean piece of meat. And you can see the end of this, it gets leaner as you go. So I'm gonna just cut that little tiny piece of fat off of here and actually almost pull it off. Now what I'm doing today is I'm hanging these. They're not gonna be cooked in the traditional way. And I'm gonna hang them slash smoke them. And we're cooking a little hotter today and a little bit faster than I would when we're not doing the traditional slow and low method. So that piece of meat's done. We're just gonna show you another one. I'm gonna show you the worst of the ones that we have here. And see, that's what you're looking for right there, that big piece of silver skin. So if you turn these around, you don't see anything else. They're looking pretty, pretty good. And just go in from the side, take your knife and just go under. And that's it. See, this one went a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna have to go just a little bit deeper with this one to kind of get to it. And just cut the whole thing out and they're holding it. And on this one, I'm gonna lose a lot of the meat just to get that thick piece off of there. So here we go, I'm just lift this back until you actually hit meat and it falls off. So we got a little bit deeper than I want, but it's okay. And we'll do the same thing over here. Just to show you on a couple of different cuts of meat where this runs. Just like that. That's it, just look around, see what you see. And if you don't see anything else, you're done. Like I said, very easy piece of meat. So we're gonna get to cutting on these and we're gonna meet you right back here to season them. Don't go anywhere. All right, so we got our tenderloin nice and cut up and trimmed up and our pork chops we're not doing a thing to them we're just going to season them so let's just show you how to get these seasoned those chops are actually cut nicely this is a huge lemon very huge lemon so we're just going to 
cut this up into a couple of pieces so we can get it squeezed in. So we're going to use this lemon as a marinade. Now I always put either vinegar or lemon on my pork. Always. Because that's what I like. And I feel it does a good job cleaning the meats. Any kind of bacteria on there it kills it. Because lemon is a natural cleaner. And so is vinegar. And when I clean my kitchen I don't use any chemicals in my kitchen and that's what I use is a natural cleaner. I use lemon and vinegar. I clean my kitchen table and anything that my meat touches, no chemicals. So it's a good thing that you want to practice is to use lemon as a cleaner. Wow, and I am surprised that this lemon didn't yield one seed out of it. That's a new one for me. All right, so we got our lemon on. These are our chops. We're gonna start with our rub. Nice and easy. Easy does it. And here I have some paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, a little oregano and a few more other seasonings that are in here, some cumin powder. I'm gonna go liberal today with the seasoning. There's no salt in here at all. So what I'll do is salt after, just so I get my rub on first. The reason why I don't add salt to here is because I don't wanna add salt on top of salt. This is why, if you're not making your own rubs, you're really missing out. And if you have high blood pressure, especially with people with hypertension, which is high blood pressure, you could just cut the salt out completely and just put this on just like this. And then you don't have to worry about that. Let's season that one. Almost forgot him. Can't forget him. Now this is what I do with the salt. Just gonna go like that. These are thick chops. You see the size of here. These these chops here. So just pat it in. Just turn them over. And like I said, for you guys that are not salt lovers or can't use it, great way to control, just like this. All right, here we go. And then of course we're gonna get the sides, just like that. Anything that falls onto the tray, you can just get the sides. Just like that. Now you have all your, your sides seasoned. And now that we have that, we can put these back in order and go in with our lemon. Now, I have oil here and I'm gonna oil these afterwards. And the reason why I'm oiling them afterwards is because if you oil them before, I'm just gonna get my hand in here, just like that. And just drizzle that on just so I don't put too much. If you put the oil on before, it's not gonna let your marinades penetrate. So one of the viewers asked me, why do you put the oil on afterwards? And that's why you put the oil on after and not before the seasoning goes on because you want the seasoning to penetrate into the meat and the oil will push out. It's almost like putting wax on a car. It's gonna make it beat up. And the oil is not gonna let your spices in. So that's why you want oil afterwards. So I would just soak it into the meat. And if I did this 
reverse where the oil was on first and my seasonings were on later, it wouldn't allow that to happen. So here we go. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on my hand and just rub. Just like that. And that's making the seasoning just go spread easy. Let's flip these over. This way you don't have powder just flaking off of your food too. So you don't want that either. Get that powder nice and rubbed in. Just like that. All right. So now we got our chop seasoned. Just like that. Just rub them against each other. And I'm just going to stack them too high. All right. So those are ready for the cooker. And we'll just trade out these guys. And again, same thing. This time I'm going to come in with the salt first. So I could see what I'm working with. These are a little bit longer. And I want to make sure I get a nice even salt on these. Now you could tie these up too. Make them like a little roast. We're not doing that today. We're actually hanging them. And I got the hangers to my right. And that's what we're hanging these with. So we're going to turn these and just season the other side and go liberal with the seasoning. Just like that. And this one here in the middle. Now I'm not going to salt all the sides because I'm going to turn them and we're going to rub it in. So that's what we're going to do. And here's our lemon juice again. We're going to go with lemon first. And I can kind of spill it in there. Get it on the tray. Now we used up all our nice lemon juice. Good thing to clean the hands and wipe the hands with the lemon juice. Now I'm going to go in with my rub. Good amount of that rub. Very liberal amount. Again, it has no salt. So if you wanted to stop at just a rub, you could. Get them turned over. Start seasoning. And even if you put too much of the rub on there, it doesn't make a difference. Because you're not going to over pepper it, over salt it. There's no pepper in here either. So we're not using pepper in this recipe today. There's no cayenne in this. You can put it in here if you want. So you could do that. And the nice thing about these rubs is you can make up any kind of seasoning you want. And we're just going light on the rub. We're not going too crazy. Just like that. And you want the, the coals and the, uh, the wood to do their job too. So you want to get that season in there from that. So you don't want to pack a bunch of seasonings on the meat. And just, uh, you just want a hint of it. Just like that. Now we're going to go in with our oil. Start rubbing. Doesn't matter if you go overboard like that because you can just swap them around. And we're going to get them all in the oil anyway. So let's get those in there. Get those all nice and coated and mixed up and rubbed in. And then we're just going to put a bunch of oil over here. I'm using my hand so I can kind of spread it evenly. Just canola oil. That's all you want. Just like that with a lemon 
and the seasonings on this tray. And if you want more at this point, you can add more. But we're gonna let these marinate a couple hours in the fridge before they go on. That's it. Get them all rubbed in. I think I'm gonna actually add just a little bit more seasoning on here because it's a little light in the middle. But you don't want to put it towards a powder form. You don't want to make it like that to the point where it's just like a, just a thick powder on the meat because it's not going to cook right. And it's going to come off of your meat and clumps. It's going to clump off onto the cooker and that's not going to be good. And there, that's how you want it, just like that. That oil is going to bring out that nice golden color as well too. All right. We're going to get these situated and we're going to meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right. This is what we're rolling with today. I call this my Frankenstein cooker. Two different grills put together. Let's show you what we got. So, like I said, I call this my Frankenstein cooker. This is two different grills. Now, this was a grill that I bought. It was called the Bullet. It didn't work out for me. Maybe it worked out well for some other guys. But to me, I just, I couldn't get into the grill. It's a um, Chinese chicken cooker. And that's what it is. And they designed this, called it a smoker. And I wasn't happy with it. So, this is the hood to it. It comes off. And you can adjust your airflow here. Which I like that part. And then we have another part here for hanging things. So what I did was I took two different grills. This is a barrel grill. And I put this on. Just take this off. This is my wood setup. So basically this is the charcoal basket, which is gonna go down below. I have a fire starter in the middle. I got some charcoal set up here. This is just cheapy Kingsford. And this is what we're gonna roll those uh, pork chops and the pork loin with tonight on here tenderloin. This is some pecan and this is just some oak to the side. This is the bottom of this cooker. Now this grate I'm going to take out of here because I want my meat to be able to go further down and with this grate in here it's not going to go down. I just put this up and set it up here to show you. The holes in here for air control. I'm also going to put some bars in here. It blocks these holes that comes with this particular type of cooker. And that's it. So this is the pit barrel cooker and this is the bullet all put together in one. We're going to cook with this tonight. Together it's the perfect grill. Stick around. We'll get her lit and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got our fire lit. Uh, let's just take a little look inside. And she's cooking away. So we're going to let this stabilize, get those coals nice and lit up, and then we're going to put our top on, let it calm down, and on with the meat we go. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're just going to show you how to hang this meat. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with our, our loin pieces. I have these hooks. Now I got these online a long time ago. They're just Chinese duck hanging hooks. They're for hanging duck. So you're just gonna put them in like that. I try to go down as far as I can. Actually, I'm gonna hang them this way because this is the not so thick side. We're gonna hang them in like that. And this way when they hang, they're hanging up like that. And that's how you want them almost to the point where they're falling over, but that's how you want them. And you want to see the hooks from the back, you want to come all the way through. And the reason why I like the double hooks is because if you lose a hook, you have no worries, you got two in there. So let's look for a thin side of the meat. This is about even. I'm gonna go with this side because I feel this side's a little bit thinner at the end. And again, I'm gonna start with a little bit down on the meat. This is not down far enough, I don't feel. So I'm going to hook it there. And I'm going to hook this one right there with it. Make sure I go through all the way. It might take you a couple of tries to, to hook it. 
just don't hit your fingers as you're going in there with it. Just like that. And there it is. And I can see my hooks from the back. Can't see it yet. Once you see your hooks from the back, you'll know you got it hooked. There you go. That's the one. This one I'm going to pull out again. They're a little bit awkward, these two hooks. There you go. Two is definitely more secure than one. All right, so those are those. I'm going to finish hooking those, and I'm going to show you how to hook our pork chops. So our pork chops, we want to get as close to the bone as possible. And just hook it like that. This way it can go onto the hook like that and it's a round hook as you'll see and you won't have to worry about it and we're going to do this pork chop like this and we're going to get it close to that t-bone and up so that's how you want to hook those these are a quick hook and hook them just like that Whoop, don't hook it on the felly side just hook it on the, the bone side. All right, I'm gonna get the hook of these. We're gonna meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so we got our meat hung and we're just gonna show you a quick chickpea salad. So right here we have our chickpeas. I got some carrot, some onion, walnuts. This is dry cranberry. You could use whatever you like. Got a lemon, a little bit of brown sugar. This is all by taste, some ground cinnamon, nutmeg, a little salt. And right here we have a Granny Smith apple sitting in acidulated water. So let's get this going. And the reason why we have that in that acid water is so it doesn't turn brown. So we're gonna start off with just a touch of salt on our chickpea, just a pinch, give that a stir. Touch more. That's that. We're gonna get our onion in. Now, I always feel out my onion because if you put too much onion, it might overpower the dish. So I like to cut it while I'm making the salad and kind of toss it in as I go. So this way I don't get too much onion in. So let's try that. See how that works out. Try to make some big, some small, small pieces. I don't try to keep them all julienne. I just try to make it just look pretty and rustic. So here we go. Not too big, but not perfect. And I think that's about where I want to be. Let's give that a quick shake. That's about it. Maybe just a little bit more. This way I know that I got the right amounts in. All right. And with our walnut and our cranberry. So along with this pork, we want to go sweet, savory. So that's where we're going. We're gonna have the flavors of a Thanksgiving meal without celebrating a Thanksgiving meal. So here we go. We're just gonna give that a quick turn. And you see how those colors are coming together. Have you never had chickpeas with cranberry mixed in? You're in for a good treat. All right, so give those another mix. And we got those guys. And with a brown sugar, little cinnamon and a little nutmeg which is a lot because we're going sweet here so let's give that a mix it's looking a little dry all right 
and we're going to start to get her wet in just to loosen this up. All right, so let's get her wet in. We're going to get some carrot in. This is going to add moisture. Not a lot of moisture, but we don't want it too wet. And we don't want it too dry. So that's about where you want to be right now. It looks very, very dry. And that's what you want. Okay. Now, I judge out my carrot as well too. And I like to peel them fresh. All right, let's start with this one. Here we go. And let's give that a little toss and see where we are with the carrot. Now the water that I have the apple sitting in, that's what we're going to use a little bit of that. And it's lemon water, just a touch. With distilled vinegar and you just want to start to get it a little bit more wet and that's what we're using and just turn it so we're going to need some more carrot in here and get those colors back off let's go in with more carrot it's going to be a bit dark on you but it's excellent. And I use all of that nice cinnamon and I use all of that nutmeg because it just makes the dish. And just a hint of nutmeg with these chickpeas is not going to do it. So you need a lot of it. And then I'm going to taste it as I go along just to see what else I need. Okay. Right about there, I feel we're good on the carrot. Maybe just a little bit more. And let's start getting our apples in. Now with the apple, you can kind of cut it any way you want. I kind of come down and just dice them up. Again, no perfect way how to cut it. Just cut them and get them in. We have a few of these. These are the Granny Smiths and they're, they're a tang. And they're going to give that tang and that sugar's in there too. So this is almost like a dessert on the plate too. This way we have that apple to go along with the pork. I feel you always need something sweet to go along with the pork because that's what you need. All right, so let's get these cut up. Try to chunk them pretty good. Oop, onion on the end of that. And we're going to get all of this apple in and the carrot. All right, here we go, last piece. And then we're going to give it a little taste. All right, let's stir it up. And like I said, now you can see it's coming together. And now it's not as dry as it was before. And we'll take it out of this vessel and put it into another vessel and it'll look good in there. All right, let's give this a try. Perfect. 
could use just a touch more salt. And that's it. All right. We're going to get this in the fridge and cool it down. And we're going to meet you back out onto the cooker. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Time to get this food on. All right, she's cranking at a good tempo right now. I got this down to about 270. Now I'm gonna probe these. So the first chops that I'm actually putting on are my temperature gauge chops. And I'm just gonna get this on, just like that. And I'm gonna get my probe outside. And I'm only probing two of these guys. And the rest of them are just gonna get on there. Now we're going far down with this one. And we're gonna get the rest on. We'll meet you right back here and show you what we got going on. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, so our meat's on. She's rolling at about 275. That's where you want this meat. It's hanging down into the fire. Everything is cooking even on this. The reason why I stuck these two grills together because the pit barrel grill with these two bars hanging from it, you have to hang the meat. I wasn't happy with that. I felt the meat was a little bit too low to the fire. This uh, bullet cooker, it had a small fuel holder to it. So you had to keep opening up the door and filling it up and filling it up and filling it up. And I'm not doing that. I'm not going to sit here and babysit a fire. So. I threw away this one and I took the top to it and the pit barrel cooks excellent for roast and other stuff that you can hang with it but you can just hang it a little bit higher away from the fire now with the setup I have of this thing rolling at now. So I'm rolling at 231 on one of the objects in here. I'm going to lift the lid in two seconds because I got the probes confused and I don't know which one's rolling at 131 but at 140 I'm pulling it. Doesn't make a difference. Each one's getting pulled at 140. So that's why I probed those two in there. And the rest of them, once we pull the two, we know the rest of them are done because they're all about the same size and thickness. With the loin, I probe the thickest one. You don't want to probe the thinnest because the thickest one is not going to be to your doneness. So once the biggest one is pretty much at my doneness, the rest of them should just follow right through. And that's what I did. This is all sealed up. It's burning nice. It's a good unit. I like it. I'll keep it. So instead of throwing away a good cooker, I salvaged the top. And to be completely honest with you, if Pit Barrel ever came up with a design like this, I think a lot more people will buy it. So Pit Barrel, if you're hearing me right now, come up with something like this. So this way, uh, people don't have to put their meat a little too closer to the fire. And that would definitely help you guys out and help us out too. That's about it. So we're going to show you the inside of this thing in just a few. We'll get this going. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Okay, we're rolling about 275 degrees. Let's see what we got. Oof, that's a smoky fire. You're really not going to see too much. I'm going to try to zoom in on here and show you what's going on. There we go. I'm going to go a little low with it and I'm going to try to get in here without getting hit with that smoke. But there it is. And I come up, try to show you guys what we got. But that's it. She's looking right. We're gonna put the lid back on, let it stabilize, and we'll meet you right back here. Stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, that meat's out there smoking away. It's looking good. We're gonna show you a quick chickpea fritter to go along with this dish. So right here we have our chickpeas. Yes, we are using chickpeas today. We're gonna to show you a couple of things you can do with chickpeas. I happen to love chickpeas and they're healthy for you. So to go along with this meal, we're making these fritters. They're gonna take the place of sausage. So we're making basically a vegetable sausage to go along with this. So here's our chickpeas. You're gonna need two eggs beaten, so just beat up some eggs. The 
let's get those in. Off to the side that goes. Black pepper. Salt. Just a little bit to taste. I don't measure. There's nothing um, precise about this. You just kind of feel it out. I'm not going to use too much salt because uh, we're not a, a salt family. Right here we have sage. There's no sausage that's complete without sage. All right, so we've got fresh garlic. We're going to crush our garlic and just throw it right in. Right here we have sage, which is used in sausage, fresh oregano, and we're just going to give that just a quick chop, just to help it along the way and the processor, and let's just get that in. And you can smell that already. All right, and then we have a carrot, we're going to bring out a little color in these. Now what I'm doing is I'm just going to help the carrot along as well too. And just get it in there. And then the smaller part, we'll just throw the whole thing in. And let the food processor do the rest of the work. Just so it doesn't have a hard time with that carrot. You're not having big, gigantic pieces in there. So the carrot's gonna bring out some flavor and a little color. And that's about it right there. I'm going to slice up the rest. Just like that, get it in. And we're going to start up our food processor. Now we're going to leave our flour out to the last second because I want to feel it out, see where, how much of my flour I need in there. All right, so we're going to get a little flour in there. This is about two tablespoons, and that's kind of where I want it. On this one, I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil, just to help it along. Now, I don't want to add water because I don't want the moisture. I want this almost like a, a veggie burger. about it that's where I want it so let's get this out into a bowl let's just take this right out of here just like this being careful with my blade and just get this right out of the way okay Just get it in there. Now the paste that's in here, you can see it's like a nice paste. We left some pieces in here. We don't want it hummus, because we're not making hummus. We want this to be able to hold together. Just like that. That's the way we want it. We're going to mix it the rest of the way. Just like that. 
and then we're going to meet you right back here to fry this up. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Alright, so it's time to flip these. I'm just going to use two spatulas to flip this. Just so you're flipping safe or a spoon. And look at that. They're coming out beautiful. Now that one I messed up a little bit. But just press it right back down again. Just flip them over. I flipped that one a little too early. But nobody will ever know the difference. And there you have it. So we're going to fry these up. And we're going to meet you back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Alright. Looking good. Now we're going to find our probe ones first. Because they were the first in. First in, first out. That's the way you want to do that. Alright, here we go. She's looking right. Let's get the rest of these out of here. If you don't have a probe, a good way to tell is when that white meat starts to come through. That's how you know. When that white meat starts coming through that meat. Now this, I did a test. I cut one earlier and put it in half so I would know where I'm at in case my gauge fails. That's another good way when you put meat on and you're using one gauge and you don't trust it that's a manual way of testing to see what you have all right a couple more to go and we're good she's a good cooker like this so Mr. Barrel Mr. Pit Barrel and Mr. Bullet, if you guys are listening, get together and make this cooker. You can't go wrong. All right, let's bring them in. Okay, so our pork is resting. We're just gonna show you a really quick and fast mushroom sauce to go along with this pork, come on in. So what you're gonna need Mushrooms, of course, portobello, purple onion, sage, oregano, and garlic. So right now my butter is on the stove, and I'm just melting my butter down. Now we're going to reach a real fast heat point with this butter, and we don't want to burn the butter, so I'm going to add a little extra virgin olive oil to this. And we're going to get this oil real hot. Give it a little shake. Just like that. And now we're gonna get start to get our mushrooms in. Just some of them. Give them a little shake. Get them in there. And let's add some garlic. All of it. We're going to add our oregano and our sage too. And we're just building up the flavors right now. I started to go outside and put this on the gas, but it's way too hot out in South Georgia right now. So we're just going to go in stages. This way we don't cool down the pot. Let's get some onion in there. And this smells excellent.
Here we go. Start adding a little salt. Not much. A couple of pinches. Some black pepper. This is a 16 mesh. Just a little bit to taste. Everybody's different. You don't want to add the pepper, don't add it. Again. Give it a quick toss. And get more mushrooms in. Just repeat. Now I'm going to get all my onions in. And what we want, we want to reduce this down. And when it starts to reduce down and get rid of some of the liquid, we're going to add a little white wine to it just to bring out some flavor and some brightness of the dish. So that's where we want to be. We'll reduce this down and we'll meet you right back here. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so our mushrooms have cooked down. They're reducing down. Now you see all that liquid on the bottom? This is how we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna take a little white wine, just a little bit. Put a splash in there. Add some alcohol. Give it a stir. Now we're gonna cook off this alcohol that's in here. And then we're gonna push all of our mushrooms to the side like this and just let all that juice. Put that on the bulk of the heat, slide it over. So this way it's on the bulk of the heat. And this is the cool side. So we're just gonna let that reduce down. We'll just kind of put them in a pile and build them all up on that side. Just like that. And just let the liquid reduce itself down. Now we're not making a gravy, we're making a sauce. So we want a little bit of that liquid. We don't want to put dry mushrooms on top of the meat. And that's what we want. So we're gonna let that reduce down. I'm gonna add a little bit more butter to it, maybe a little bit more wine, and just judge it out from there. And that's it. We'll see you when we're on the chopping block. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, and here we are once more on season two shopping block. Let's see what we got. All right, look at that. So we're gonna just get into this. We're gonna choose a loin and uh, we'll choose a chop. And we'll plate up. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, let's just go right down the middle of this loin. Let's see what we got going on. Look at that. Beautiful. Perfectly cooked. It's not dry. And it's moist. And that's how you want this. You don't wanna dry that piece of meat out. So let's just give that a slice. And let's give that a pit master go. So this would be the filet mignon of beef, but it's pork. Look at that, beautiful. Very, very tender piece of meat. We're gonna cut a couple of pieces to plate up. I like to cut them big like this. You can cut them smaller, but they just lead for a very beautiful presentation when you cut them this big and you plate up with them that big. I'm just gonna cut this one just like that. And we'll even take a piece off of that end. In my family, we 
All right, so we're gonna leave this here to plate up. I'm gonna put that pit master taste off to the side there. Put this back. Let's get into this chop. First thing we'll do, we'll just show you this side. Now, this side is the tenderloin side. And we're just gonna show you this, this chop. Cutting around the bone. There you have it. Look at that. Beautiful. Came out perfect. Now, I won't give this one a pit master taste because we're going to plate up with it. I'll show you what all this looks like on a plate. So, let's get our plate together. We'll slide this up. And we'll get a little salad on our plate. Just gonna show you guys a quick way to plate this. So you get the salad on just like that. And your guests are gonna love this one. So here's your salad. Now we're gonna get this up onto the board so we can work with it better. Like that. I want you to get it more situated in the middle. And there's a reason why. Let's get some lettuce on that side. And get it more in the middle. Just like that. Perfect. Surrounded by a little bit of lettuce. All right, so now, let's get our chickpeas in. These are those nice chickpeas that we made with the cranberry. Nice healthy dish. And we're just gonna get some Nice bright colors in there. Just like that. Followed by a little bit more lettuce. And this is our chickpea fritter. So we're gonna get our chickpea fritter in there. Just like that. Put it on that plate. Just like that. And we're gonna take a piece of this pork chop and just get it in there. Like that. So this way we have our pork chop on the plate and everything goes together. So you got the loin meat, the chopped meat, and one more special thing, that nice mushroom sauce that we made. We're just going to get that onto the plate as well. Just get it right on there. Just like that. And there it is. Now I'm going to put a little drizzle of the butter and the sauce in there. Just like that. There you have it. And that will be our plate. I'm just going to slide this up. Give this a quick wipe. And slide it up so you can see that. Let's put this off to the side. And show you this. And there it is. I'm going to turn it around like this. You can see that side. You can see it from that side. But the side I like the most 
will be that side. All right, so we're gonna get situated and get cleaned up and we'll meet you right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, there it is. Pork tenderloin, thick cut pork chop on the Frankenstein cooker with fresh homemade mushroom and onion sauce, chickpea salad, chickpea fritters, can't go wrong. And if you like this video, and more videos are about to come, please hit that little like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little bell. This way you get all the videos first, notifications first. Again, thank you for coming. We love to have you. And with no further ado, gotta get that little uh, good match taste there.